What do you find most challenging and rewarding about being a filmmaker? Well, listen, when you're a writer, the most challenging thing is the first page, the empty page, and to start. This is the most scary and, you know, intimidating part, maybe, of the process. I love rewriting. I love revising, right? But at the beginning, you have nothing. So that's hard. What's the most rewarding thing? When you tell a story and someone sees themselves in your work and there is... Not to sound too woo-woo, but when it's a bit of, it's healing, you know? And it's very rewarding when you hear from other people that something that you wrote touched them and they felt they saw themselves in your work. <laughs> Can you discuss the role of film festivals and their impact on your career? I mean, I started to go to film festivals when I was very young. I lived in the suburbs in Canada and I would drive in for TIFF. Toronto International Film Festival. Originally it was called the Festival of Festivals. If I was working, if I had a job, I would take a week off and I would get a pass and I would go to see all the films. And it was, it makes me emotional because I love it so much. The, the impact of my career has just continued to boost my love of stories and character and filmmakers. And it was definitely part of my origins as an artist. And what's the impact on your career? Well, I just said it. Okay. Why do we continue to make films today? When I think of films, like telling stories, why do we continue? It's like people sitting around the, the fire, the earliest humans, they're telling stories. Listen, art is why we can stay alive. If they cut funding to arts, in school, and it's like, it's crazy, it's crazy. Life is hard. And so that's why we continue to tell stories so that we can endure and that films are part of that, right? Okay. If you could collaborate with the person of your choice, your dreams, who would it be and why? Okay, listen. So one of my favorite films is Broadcast News by James L. Brooks. I've always thought, wouldn't it be cool? I mean, just to be, just to, <laughs> just to have a conversation with James L. Brooks, you know, a dream, I guess, a fantasy would be that he would read one of my scripts and he would say, I want to produce that. I think Broadcast News is close to a perfect film. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. Okay. What film, meeting, person, experience made you want to make films? Whew, that's a hard one, you know? I'm glad it's last. It'd be funny if you did a time jump to <laughs> me later me thinking about what the answer is. I mean, when I was young, the VCR was, and videotapes were, were so new when I was young, and we would go to the store and we would rent a VCR. That's how old I am. No. And you would take it in a big suitcase home, and we would take movies. And so, I mean, that's, when you start to watch movies, I don't know, I can't say, but I fell in love, you know? Like, I, I, I was just amazed, and I would read it. I had books, books, and books of every movie I ever saw, and I would give it a grade. <laughs> It makes me emotional because I loved it so much. I would say, this movie, this movie, and then I would read about movies that other people thought were the best movies, and then I would say, I have to see all those movies. So I don't know if it's one thing. I don't know the answer of how I fell in love with film, except that it happened, and I think about those early days of the family renting videos and, and it just being like magic. Je m'appelle Tracy Dawson, I am a writer, and 